My name is Erin. I quit a PhD, an unhealthy marriage, and city life in order to homeschool my kids, mentor on a permaculture food forest, and build my own tiny house with almost no building experience. And I filmed it all so you could watch me succeed or fail in glorious fashion. Hey, won't you stay a little bit longer? I'm sorry, didn't mean to, but I heard you cannot undo it. So please, Hi, buddy. Today, we pick up the story in early September where I'm rushing to get the house ready so my kids and I can move in before the winter comes. I'm putting the roof on, Miss Fear Heights. I'm up here, well, I guess 13 feet off the ground because that's how high I'm legally allowed to build the tiny house. Um, anything that's gonna go on the road can't be more than 13 feet high. So that's how high I am off the ground, 13 feet, which isn't really that high on the scale of things, but I am afraid of heights, uh, but it's going well. I've done about half of the roof already, which is, well, half of this half. We'll do the nor the south half tomorrow. Um, I got my safety harness on, so, Mom, you don't have to worry about me. <laughs> and it's going really well. Uh, I'm trying to build with more love. <laughs> uh, Part of the reason it's going really well is I had help from Garnet today. He helped me put all of these up here and tack them down. And now I'm just doing the nailing and the taping by myself. And I'm listening to some good music and I'm enjoying the views and I'm trying not to stress about anything. And it's good. Life is good. I'm going to have a roof on my house. Yay! There we go, we have a roof. I'm very proud of that. Every time that I take on a new thing, I'm always really scared and then I get more confident as it goes and then when it's done, I'm just so proud. It's so cool. <laughs> so I got a bit of the roof done today, but it was just ridiculously hot. So we started work at like 8.30 and gave up at like 11 because we just couldn't breathe. And it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow. So that means I am back to covering everything with tarps. I will be so ecstatic when the building is secured and I don't have to cover it with tarps anymore. Hopefully that isn't too far off, but we work with what we got so all the windows are cut that's the girls bedroom window bathroom window two kitchen windows front door living room window living room window my bedroom window sorry darling and the back door Bethany's working on some really cool art here with flowers and leaves and a hammer and a hammer and fabric and tape yeah looks really cool so from the outside the whole exterior is sheathed and the roof is sheathed and i started putting on the drip edge and the ice and water shield on that center section there since i have the scaffolding there it made sense to get started on that then the next step will be putting on the strapping and then I can start putting on the roof, which is really exciting. It's so fun to be moving forward. I'm on the roof again today, uh, putting in the drip edge, also known as Eve starter, I think it was. So this is the first layer of waterproofing the roof. Um, uh, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing, so I'm not going to teach you what I'm doing because I'll probably be teaching you wrong, <laughs> but, uh, 
I understand the basic gist of it is that you start at the bottom and you work your way up with the waterproofing so that when it rains, the water comes, you know, it, there's no way for it to get in. There's a real push to get the waterproofing done today because tomorrow we're going to visit my parents. It's the first vacation I've taken <laughs> since I got here in March. And it's the first time I've seen my parents since we moved here in March. But before we go, I have to get the ice and water shield on the roof and I have to get the house wrap on the house. Hopefully I can get it done today. So I'm installing this ice and water shield. In our climate, you're supposed to put two rows of it at the bottom of your roof. But my roof, two rows, covers pretty much the whole roof. So I'm gonna put one more row just over the ridge beam there just to give myself some extra waterproofiness. I gotta say, this stuff goes on really easily. You just roll it out, line it up, and peel the sticky stuff back. And it sits pretty much exactly where it's supposed to sit. Uh, I'm getting a little bit braver on the roof, but I'll also be really happy when roof work is finished. Just like that. Look at that. Like a dream. So I was working my butt off to get the house wrap and the um, ice and water shield on before I went to my mom and dad's. <sighs> this morning I got the ice and water shield on nice and quick and easy. We were in the middle of doing the house wrap and the ice and water shield fell right off the house. The sun shone on it. The tar got a bit slippery, I guess. It's supposed to get stickier when it gets hot, but it just slid right off the roof, the, sh the steep part. So we finished wrapping the house and now I have to redo the ice and water shield, but of course I didn't have enough. 11 feet short, I had to go all the way into town, which is a 20 minute drive each way. And by 65 feet of ice and water shield so that I could put 11 more feet on the roof. And it's this really awkward spot that I can't reach from the top or from the bottom. So it's kind of a train wreck. I'm really irritated. And it is four o'clock in the afternoon. I had hoped to leave at 10 o'clock this morning. So I came up from the back the back side and I tacked I, I was able it wasn't stuck on hard enough I was able to fold it back and tack it up so now I can get those three layers on and then fold this back down again so the way I solved the problem is I'm just putting some strapping on that's not where the strapping is gonna be I mean it will be eventually but there's gonna be vertical straps first, but this does the double job of holding the ice and water shield to the roof, but also each of these nails is in a rafter, so it'll show me where my rafters are even after they're covered up with the ice and water shield. So I'm pretty happy with that clever little innovation, but I need two hands to do this job so you don't get to see it because it's just not, it's just not going to happen. I folded this back so that that could go under it, but now this is not sticky even a little bit. <laughs> I guess exposing it to the sun made it not sticky. So I'm gonna hammer some of those, um, some of that strapping on over top of it, and hopefully when it gets hot tomorrow, it'll get sticky again. We'll see. Are you gonna all right. leave all that on it, or are you gonna take it off? No, that all stays on there. That's all part of the house. And those kind of look like the shingles. Well, there's going to be steel on top of it, but it is made of the same stuff that shingles are made of. That bit that's flapping around, I'm going to cut that off. Yeah, you're going to cut windows. Yeah, and I'm going to cut the windows. It was 8 p.m. before we left, 10 hours later than planned. But we spent two lovely days with my parents, where I could forget all about my stresses for a little while. But soon we were back at the farm and back to work. So we had a lovely weekend visiting with my parents and we're back now trying to get in the groove of working. The first day back was just a bit of a mess. The girls just needed a nap. So I practically did nothing that day. Yesterday they had a play 
day with a new friend, so we didn't accomplish anything yesterday. Today, I am determined to accomplish something. I got an early start, but we had to go to the store because I was all out of nails, so it is almost lunchtime, and I'm finally getting started. Today's project is I need to install a door in that hole right there. Uh, do I know how to install a door? No, I don't. And this is a secondhand door. And I also need to shorten it because this is a short door because it needs to fit underneath my loft. So, uh, lots, lots of unknowns. <laughs> Wish me luck. I'm noticing this wood has come off of the door here. And I'm like, what the hell? How did I do that? Did I scrape it? Did I scratch it? Did I... Wait a minute. There's mouse poo absolutely everywhere here. A mouse ate my door. A mouse ate my door. How? Like, what the heck? The amount of time the dogs spent underneath this tarp looking for mice. And somehow, a mouse ate my door. I'm so not impressed. So I have to build a frame for this door. Um, I don't think this is the right wood. I think it's too soft, but it's what I have. And I'm pretty sure that I'm going to do it wrong anyway. So I figure this is my practice door. And over the winter, it will slowly fall apart. And next year, I will rebuild it and I will do a much better job. <laughs> That's the plan. Good plan, I think. Good plan. It's occurring to me in the middle of this rather complicated maneuver that far more talented far more talented people than me with far better tools have probably tried and failed this so i don't know how on earth i have a chance of succeeding what i'm trying to do i'm trying to make the door shorter but i didn't want to just cut it off because it would be you know all this stuff i wanted this flat bit at the bottom so i'm trying to create like a tongue and groove thing so that I can slip the bottom half of the door into the top half of the door and I just cut out a chunk out of the middle. Um, now I think to do that you would usually use a router and I don't have a router. Actually it's entirely possible I do have a router but when I tried to find garnet I couldn't find them so I don't know if we have a router or not. Uh, so without a router what I'm doing is I'm using the saw and this thing here, I don't know what this thing is technically called, but we call, but Garnet and Laura Jean call it the, the nibbler. So, uh, yeah, uh, it, it, there's a, it is a very high chance of total failure, but that's not true. The only way to fail is to never try. <laughs> that's what I tell myself anyway. Uh, it kind of fit. Where's the hammer? It almost works. That spot right there. It works. If you just ignore this big hole here. <laughs> that spot right there. Ta da! It works. <laughs> the rest of it. Eee, maybe not so good. Just remember, a custom made door is like over a thousand dollars and this door was free. So, <sighs> maybe I can get a good door later. I need to use my phone now to Google to see if anyone else is giving away a free door.
soon as she sees you, she goes, eh? <laughs> I'm just gonna take a break from the door because I don't know what to do. And I'm putting on strapping. I'll be able to attach my siding to this, but I'm not planning to do the siding until next year. This is just to keep the, the house wrap on because these little staples, I don't know, they weren't the right size or something, they didn't go in. And I don't trust those to hold. There's a lot of them, but I don't trust those to hold for the whole winter. So I'm just going to put my strapping on now. Because it's fairly easy and I have the stuff that I need. And then that way I don't have to worry about it. As you can see, my hammering is still pretty much the same. <laughs> not getting better, but not getting worse. because it's a double stud underneath so to miss a double stud takes a whole lot of real skill and talent <laughs> I'm making my own door frame I had to go to the store yesterday to get some nicer wood. This is actually this is actually my second try at making the door frame. The first try, the wood I was using was just really cheap, crappy, and I knew just putting it together that it wasn't gonna hold. So I went into town, which is a 20 minute drive, to the store, to the home hardware there. And there's a woman who works at the home hardware, and her name is Terry. Oh my god, this camera is so off an angle. Let me see if I can fix this. I'm getting motion sickness. Anyways, so I went to home hardware, and Terry was working. And Terry knows what she's talking about. She's clearly got some sort of construction background or has just worked at home hardware for a really long time and takes her job seriously because whenever I go in there <laughs> the look she gives me <laughs> is basically you're an idiot you have no business doing what you're doing like she looks like she wants to call security on me <laughs> that's how intense she is. Oh, that was deep. Anyway, so I went in and I told her, I'm building my own door frames. And she looks at me and she says, do you have any idea how difficult that is? It's really complicated to build a door frame. It's not just a little piece of wood. There's, And she starts naming all of the bits that you need to add to a piece of, to a door, to a door frame. And I'm like, yeah, I know it's really difficult to build a door frame, but do you know how expensive it is? to buy a pre-hung door. It's like almost a thousand dollars. I can't afford to spend a thousand dollars on one door. That's ridiculous. I need that money for other things like insulation. <laughs> but so I don't know what happened to the rest of this clip. I filmed a whole ramp and I think my phone must have stopped recording part way through. The gist of it is I built that door frame and I built another frame for my French doors. And those door frames are probably two of the things that I am the most proud of because they were so hard to do, but they've held together really well. If I remember correctly, what I said about Terry at Home Hardware was this. Every time she talked to me like that, it made me it, it filled me with more and more doubt and it made it harder for me to go back to that home hardware. It made it harder for me to walk up to that desk and ask for the things that I needed. It made me want to talk to the teenagers because I know that they didn't have any idea what I was doing. They would just type things into the computer and not ask me any questions at all. But I still went to Terry and I still asked her the questions because to be honest, she's right. I don't have any 
right to build a house. I have no qualifications. I am so far out of my depth that I do need to get advice from the lady at Home Hardware for what I'm doing. Her advice was invaluable to me and on more than one occasion saved my ass from making a big mistake. So Terry, if you're watching this, I have to say thank you. And I did it. <laughs> Yeah, let's just see if it works. Shall we see if it works, Abby? Yes. All right. Yes. Turn the thingy, Abby. Hooray! It works! Hooray! Hey, Mom. Hey, babe. If I could turn this into a rock and this into a rock, I'd do it. Can't just be any old rock, though. I know. It has to be the right kind of rock. All right. Mom, how do I get this to stop filming? Press the button, the circle. What's so Mom. What's so cool? Should be over here, I think. Look at look how bouncy they are. They are so bouncy. Bye, Mom. Bye, Mom. <laughs> okay. Wait, take a picture. I wake up here. Mom. Mom. Poop on my scaffolding. And I'm like, what on earth is pooping in my house? This epic, gigantic spider is pooping in my house. We will move her out to the garden because that is a much better place for her. You can see the weather has turned. <laughs> Yesterday it was like 28 degrees and today we're wearing hats. Um, because it's such yucky weather, I didn't really want to work on anything outside. I'm giving myself kind of a mental health day and I am mapping out the floor plan of the tiny house in the actual tiny house. So like, there's my actual bathtub where it's actually going to go. And I figured out that I can turn it a little bit sideways and I could put, there's gonna be a wall here, but I could put a great big potted plant in that spot right there. How cool is that? I'm really, really, starting to get excited about this. I'm sure I will be depressed about it tomorrow, <laughs> but this is gonna be cool when it's finally done. It's just gonna be a long and exciting process to get from here to there. So I'm installing this window by myself. The first one I've done by myself. Those two over there I had help with our neighbor Dawn, but this one I'm on my own. And I'm remembering something in a video that I saw, which was check to see if the window fits before you tape it. Because look at the size of this gap. I could fit a two by four in here. And then look, the other side has just as big of a gap. I could fit a two by four in there. So um, yeah, I'm kind of wishing I had checked the window before I put the tape on because now I need to put some more wood in there and retape it, which is a waste of tape because this stuff is like 70 bucks a roll and I'm gonna definitely need to buy more than one rolls. So, you know, now I remember, now I remember. There we go, three windows. I need to spray foam them. Uh, and then I guess that's it. I feel like there should be more to it, but I don't know, building the house is weird. There's some things that you like, put 64 nails in it and it's still not strong enough. And other things you're like, just use some spray foam, it'll be fine. And there's my door, not finished, but looking good. The other living room window, the big door needs to go there. I got two kitchen windows. So still to be installed is a bathroom window and the girl's bedroom window, which is awesome. I'm really excited. I wanted this to be done by the end of August. It is now the end of September, <laughs> such is life.
So I had some help today, which was awesome, and they brought nice tools, which was awesome. You can't really see it from here, but right at the top of that roof, you can see there is tin on that roof. I'm very happy getting there a little bit every day. And now I'm walking the dogs because Laura Jean and Garnet are at a wedding. So chaos is my responsibility. So this is the only window that I bought brand new. This is for the girls loft. See, we're way up off the ground, you know, like seven feet. Um, the window I originally found for this space, the window didn't slide open and close very easily. And since this needs to be the girls fire escape, I really needed it to s open and close really easily. And what's really cool is that also the screen slides across so that they can get it in and out really easily if they need to be. Eventually, I would like to have a slide here so that they can just slide out their fire escape. But that's further down the line. Yeah, I like that window. It was $300, unfortunately, which was way out of my budget, but safety first. So I have installed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven windows. I got one left to go. This one here. Uh, I did all the first two I had help for, but the rest of them I did all by myself. And installing windows by yourself is kind of tricky because the windows can fall on the floor. So I finally come up with a system and I can do it in about an hour. So I'll show you how that works. So the first thing is you cut the house wrap. And it's funny when you watch when you watch videos online about how to cut out the house wrap for the windows. There's like a massive debate about the right way to do this. Which made me really happy actually. Because you find a lot of people tell you the right way to do stuff. And they sound very confident when they say it. They sound so confident, it's like, you'd be an idiot if you didn't do it the right way. So it's easy for me to feel like an idiot. But it turns out, the right way just depends on the person and who's doing it, why they're doing it, where they're doing it. Do it however the heck you want. The end. Now I go inside. So before I put this on, I check and make sure that the window fits. Because I learned the hard way. I can probably put a whole nother 2 by 4 down here. waterproof. So waterproofing is done with this stuff. This is actually the stuff I bought from the door, but I'm running out of window stuff, so I'm using this for the window. So how did I learn how to do any of this? I watched videos online. I read blogs online. I watched more videos online. I asked different people, um, and then I didn't take anybody's word for a hundred percent because, you know, there's loads of different ways. There's loads of different right ways to do it. So I tried not to get caught up in one person's advice. 
because people have different reasons for doing things the way that they do them. And I would ask, you know, why? Why do you do it that way? Because maybe it doesn't make sense for my house. Like, a lot of the time, the things that they do, it's because they want it to look pretty. I don't care if it looks pretty. I need it to keep me dry, and I need it to keep me warm, and I need it to be structurally sound, and everything else doesn't matter. It's really be easy to be like, well, this person I trust, because this person has this much and this much and this much experience, and they know what they're talking about. So I'm just going to do it the way that they tell me to do it. You know, it's really easy to do that, and there have been times when I have totally done that. <laughs> But the truth of the matter is they don't know my house and they don't know my needs and they don't know my budget. They don't know my skill level. They don't know, you know, they don't know me. The only person who knows what I need is me. So I ask them as many questions about their advice to try to understand why they think I should do it that way. And then I have to decide for myself because I'm the one that has to live with it, you know? And sometimes people will give me mis mis advice and they're like 100% confident that that's the right way to do it. But if they're wrong, I'm the one that's going to be cleaning up the mess later. And all that I'm going to be doing is going, oh, oh, I thought it would work. You know, I'm the one that's going to be cleaning up the mess. <laughs> So I have to be really careful to trust myself and not just blindly trust everybody else, which is very hard for me. I'm very much a person. I think that's part of the reason why I wanted to unschool my kids because I think the system rewards people who just trust everybody else. <laughs> and does what they're told to do. So the idea is you want there to be a line going down so that if water gets caught somewhere, it goes down. And you see, I've done a, an absolutely piss poor job here. So I'm gonna put another piece on here to help encourage the water to move down rather than in because that's totally not what that does, that spot right there. Hi. Hello, this is the key. I'm installing a window. You won't have any help. And that keeps the window from falling out. Okay, so shims, the bottom. Shims on either side. Test that the window opens. And have your five-year-old steal your camera. I'm film right now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Abby. What you eating? Um, an apple grew on this fall. Yeah. How does it taste? It tastes like an normal, uh, a normal <laughs> apple, but not uh, washed. But not washed. <coughs> yeah. But we don't really need to wash our apples. Do you know why? Why? Because we don't spray our apples with chemicals. Mhm. Mm where can I put this? Are you done with it? Yeah. I like most of the spots, bad spots. Oh, okay. I bet you you can think of somebody who'd really like it. I know him. He always the chickens and the guineas. Yeah, they'd all love it. Who are you going to give it to? I'll fill in the chicken coop. All right. Bye. Bye.
So the last step on the inside was to put these up here to keep the window from falling inward. So now it can't fall out, it can't fall in, it can't shift to the side because of the shims. Um, so the only thing left to do is spray foam. And I have never done spray foam before. And I have been procrastinating, procrastinating it for a couple of weeks because I always hate taking on a new job that I've never done before. But I know that I'll mess up the first one pretty badly. By the time I get to the third one, I'll be really good at it. <laughs> so I just have to start. Can I talk to you before you do it? Uh, as of now, do not talk to me. Okay. How after you do it? You just talk to me. Uh, you don't do anything that you shouldn't, okay? Okay. Daddy, we talk to you. Um, yeah. Well, it's not supposed to wiggle around like that, though. Thank you. 